what is it, Bradley? <laughs> Christmas is over! <laughs> Buddy, it's only December 27th. Well, we only got 363 days until next Christmas! It's too long! <laughs> huh. Well, we can still celebrate Christmas today. What? How? By celebrating today's Ponder Point. Hey, why don't you tell us what today's Ponder Point is? And today's Ponder Point is... God is King! Wow! Which we can see through the tale of... The Three Wise Men! Wow! Uh, you're right! We can celebrate that God is King! That, 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 that's amazing! Exactly, Bradley. Hey, Sammy, there's one final gift under the tree. Why don't you open it up? Oh, Cameron, look, you would even have to tell me twice. <laughs> Tally ho! <gasps> it's a wise man! Uh, I always wondered how they factored into the Big God story. Do, do you think someone could explain? Huh. Well, I suppose that one is going to take a little bit of explaining. Hey, Potterpuss, would you mind exactly telling us why the wise men are a part of the Big God story? Sure, I'd be glad to explain. Well, the only way we could do it was start at the very beginning. <clears throat> do you guys remember the uh, December 21st Christmas star that popped up in the sky? Yeah, kind of like that. Well, you see, in the far Asian province, there were three wise men who were like the top of their class, the most highly educated people on the planet at the time. They saw a star just like that, and they knew that it ushered in the birth of Christ. So, they packed up their things and traveled for months and even years on end just to, for a chance to see the newborn savior. So, uh, sadly they arrived roughly three years after Christ's birth, but hey, you know, it's a thought that counts. So, each of their gifts represented a part of Jesus' life, which we'll explain later on in today's Bible story. But, keeping that in mind, so how does this relate to the big God story, you may ask? Well, it shows that God is king, not just in Israel or the United States, but over the entire world. People were willing to travel just to see God and made into human form. Wow. I hope that helps you out, Sammy. Now, excuse me, I gotta get back to pranking Cameron. <laughs> now it's time for Bradley's Christmas Poems. The pause of the show where Bradley comes out and does a Christmas poem. So without further ado, Bradley's Christmas Poems. Hello everyone, and on today's show, I'm going to read to you Three Wise Men by May Stein. <clears throat> they saw a star so brightly while traveling day and nightly. The cold winds blew so slightly, searching for the newborn king. With gifts they brought the Savior were given in their favor. To Mary, gifts they gave her while our angels softly sing. Wow, I hope you take the time today to realize that God is king. Wow. Have a great day, folks. Oh, oh, hello, everyone. Uh, on today's show, I've been asked to uh, explain the concept of frankincense and myrrh. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, can you guys say frankincense? Here, we'll say it together. Ready? Frank and sense. <laughs> oh, good job, good job. Yeah, now you see, frankincense was an incense or something that smelled good that was normally placed in the altars at the temples. So, uh, wow, so that wise man was basically saying that Jesus is our high priest. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, 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 the final one. Myrrh. We'll say it together. Ready? Mm -er. Myrrh. Myrrh. <laughs> good job, good job. Now, you see, myrrh was actually a uh, burial thing. It was usually sprinkled to keep the body smelling good after they had passed away. So, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. It was really expensive, too. It would basically be the equivalent of, uh, showing up at a baby shower and, uh, presenting the baby with a funeral plot. <gasps> huh. I may need to have a talk with that third wise man. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day. Now, excuse me, I gotta get back to my potatoes. Okay, I'm coming, guys! Hello guys, and welcome back to Crafts with Mikey, and on today's show, I'm going to show you how to create- Oh, come on guys! How many times must I tell you? I don't have arms! 
This is awkward. Hello and welcome to ESPMX, your premier Muppet Sports Center. I'm your host, Man Array. And on today's show, we're going to have Bradley attempting the world famous sport of skydiving. Bradley? Um, yes, I am currently on a uh, Airbus trying to make my way to the highest altitude of 20,000 feet. Um, I don't quite know how this works. Um, are you sure this is safe? Oh no, don't worry, Bradley. It's been tested out numerous times. You'll be safe as long as you have your parachute and your odometer. Um, okay, I'll give it a shot. Here I go. Whoa! Okay, if I was actually having fun here, I would actually have fun. But this is not fun. Whoa! Oh, wait, I, I feel like I forgot something important. Somebody help me, please. Whoa! Please, uh, get Bradley an ambulance. That would probably be for the best. Anyway, uh, from all of us here at ESPMX, we say good night, and, uh, I may need to get Bradley an Uber. Oh, hey guys, uh, welcome to my little office space here. Um, for today's Bible story, I wanted to actually go over a little craft with you. So, in order to do this craft, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a piece of paper, a red pencil, and uh, you can use a Sharpie or a marker or whatever. But anyway, so what I'm going to need you guys to do is set up your paper to look like this, okay? Trust me, this is actually going to factor in later on. So, with all that ready... Let's get started. Now, the purpose of the way how I have this set up is to where we have our three items right here and exactly how it's going to factor into representing Jesus. All right, so our first item is gold. So you can draw like, you know, these little circles like that. Just put, just put a few circles together like so to represent gold. You could even draw a square. I like to add a little bit like that where that gives it that nice kind of flair. And then of course, you know, maybe like add a little 100 onto it, you know, just something to make it a little festive. And you could put gold, G-O-L-D, gold, right there. Now, when we think of gold, we think of wealth, status. Now, normally gold would be given to royalty. So we're gonna go to our little equal sign and we're gonna go over, match it up, and we're gonna put a little crown like that, a little crown. So, next to crown, we're gonna put king, K-I-N-G, king, okay? Okay, next item, we've got frankincense. I don't expect you guys to know how to spell that. I, even I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> so, we're gonna put a little jar. Cause it was bound to come in a jar because it was a spice. Something that would be placed in the holy temple. So, and then for Frank, frankincense, we're just going to put F-R-A-N-K. Frank, a name. <laughs> so then, we're going to go across, equals, and since frankincense was used in the temple, we're going to draw ourselves a little house like so, and we're going to put a little cross right here in the middle. You see? So, and what do churches normally have in it? They usually have a priest or a pastor. Okay. Okay, final one. Myrrh. Myrrh was also in, was actually more of like a box type thing. This is what I've been studying for the past couple of years. All right. So you see, we got our box. And for myrrh, that's spelled M Y R. 
H. Mer. Okay? Then right across from that equals. Now, mer was actually used for burial plots. It was used to make the bodies smell good after they had passed away. So, what do we know about Jesus and burial plots? That's right, the tomb. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle like that. Then put a smaller circle in there, but only do it halfway like so. And then we're going to draw a circle and then we're going to color that in right there. Boom. Now what do you got? You've got the stone rolled away from his tomb. And what does that make Jesus? That makes him our savior. S A V I O R. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I had this column right here labeled items, the items given by the three wise men. The other side says Jesus is. So now what do we see that Jesus is? Jesus is our king, our priest, and finally, our savior. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I don't know if the wise men knew this at the time, but you know how you kind of get that feeling at the back of your head when you want to go talk to somebody, when you feel the Holy Spirit telling you what needs to be done? I like to think that the wise men had that sort of feeling too. Because God set this in motion. He set everything in motion to know that every single item on this list that was given by the wise men to Christ actually worked in, in basically telling the future of what Jesus would do. He would be our forever king. He would be the priest of our hearts. And finally, he'd be our savior, dying a brutal death on the cross to save us all from our sins. It's quite amazing when you really think about it. Well, anyway, I hope that little craft helps you to remember each item and how it factors into the big God story. Anyway, back to you, Bradley. Well, it's amazing to think that we can celebrate Christmas year round by celebrating and acknowledging that God is king of both our hearts, of the world, and of the universe. Wow, it's amazing. I, uh, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and be sure to spread just a little bit more of peace, love, and joy in your day-to-day -day life and make every day like Christmas. Goodbye, folks!